photograph your cat, how to photograph your kitten. Uh, I'm gonna share about like 12, 13 tips maybe in this video. I'm gonna show you example photos. I'm gonna show you how I photographed uh, these two beautiful kittens. And um, yeah, I'm gonna bring him, bring him back to the living room so he can uh, play with his sister. But anyway, so this is a uh, uh, big boy, Simba. Hello. Hello, I'm Simba. And I want to play. Okay. So this is uh, Sammy. <laughs> She's a girl. She's uh, still a kitten, but she's actually quite big right now. So we adopted her and her twin brother. <laughs> she is not allowed to be in the studio, so she's just looking around, wanting to uh, explore all those fluffy little blankets, but you're not allowed to touch anything. So I'm going to show you some footage of when they were still very tiny, covered in fleas. Okay, so I'm actually pretty allergic to cats, as you can see, because I think Sammy kind of like scratched me by accident. I mean, they're kittens, and I brought her in here, and uh, it wasn't the best time, but I just wanted to show her anyway. Uh, so she <laughs> she used her nail on me, and it was super itchy, and um, it's like swelling a little bit. No reason to get rid of them. Um. Uh, how to photograph your cat, how to photograph your kitten or kittens. Uh, let's first go to that and afterwards I'll tell you the story of how we ended up with two kittens, me being a dog person, uh, having no intentions on getting cats and coming back from a trip to Sweden with two cats. So uh, that story will be at the end, but first let's go to the tips on how to photograph your cat. Okay, so let's assume you either have your phone to take photos with or a camera um, first before getting the cats with you uh, let's set a decor in my case I already wanted to take photos of them when we just got them so they were not allowed to be in the backyard yet so my decor would be indoor now our cats really match our home decor wasn't intended that way because I didn't buy them I didn't buy the cats I didn't pick them out from a store or like wherever they just really match our interior design decor at home so uh, we have a white couch so I would say pick a kind of clean background but it doesn't have to be like pure white because that I usually that's more like a studio decor and I like actually photographing animals with a little bit more in the background but blurry and we'll get to that later so I pick the couch I place some pillows in the same like kind of colors as, as the cats uh, well they're red so like dried flowers looked really nice um just like reed things wood those kind of colors we have this um kind of like a burlap carpet which looked really nice it's kind of have like a clean decor without too much clutter without too many colors but maybe some colors that complement the color of your cat so maybe if you have a white cat uh, you could add some blue or green but keep it quite clean uh, if your cat is black maybe you want to add a little bit more like lighter things around your cat uh, so that the whole image doesn't get too dark but maybe not go for bright white because then if your cat is quite dark you don't want to overexpose the white and then have like a very dark cat in your photos and you don't really distinguish the nose and the eyes and stuff like that so choose a decor without too much clutter or tidy up your house first and kind of pick colors that either like complement the color of your cat or like kind of like are similar to the color of your cat so that it's like a calm decor where your cat really shines. When looking for your decor, tip number two is pick good lighting as well. Um, so a big window is beautiful and you can use some backlighting so you can have the window behind the cat and the cat is like, I have this photo where the cat was like walking towards me, the light was behind it. But what's usually really flattering is a light that comes from the side. So, and then maybe a little bit from the top, because when you're photographing a human, you don't really want to have the light coming from the bottom upwards, because then it kind of looks spooky and not very flattering, with like shadows and just weird chins and stuff. So usually when the light is coming from the top and the side, it kind of can be angled a little bit. So you have like the Rembrandt light. So you have one side of your face lit up, maybe like this little triangle under your eyes. Usually when you photograph a human, maybe for a cat as well. So the light is coming a little bit from the front or a little bit from the top, from the side. 
and you have like these beautiful catch lights in their eyes as well you actually see the light of the window reflected in their eyes it really gives you know life to the image so when you're looking for that corner in your house without too much clutter with beautiful colors that complement your cat uh, make sure that there's maybe some natural light as well like a big window or something so now you have your camera, uh, I would go for a faster shutter speed. So usually when I'm photographing kids, I don't go slower than 1 slash 200 because kids move around as well. Well, cats are actually a little bit faster. So I had a little bit faster shutter speed, like 1 slash 250 for like a minimum. You can always go faster because I really like shooting uh, with a large aperture, so your beautiful blurry background, so maybe it's set at 1.8 or 1.4 and then there's a lot of light coming into the photo so you might already have your ISO the lowest at like 100 and then you can increase your sp shutter speed a lot more um, but don't, I wouldn't go any slower than 1 slash 250 for example for a cat because you don't want to get like blurry photos and they can move really fast Okay, so now you're still prepping, your cat is maybe still sleeping somewhere or having his lunch, breakfast, dinner, snacks, whatever. Um, get maybe a little toy or like a little snack that they really like. But I experience that if I use snacks for taking photos, they will immediately dive into the snacks. If I'm holding the snack next to the camera, I want them to look at the camera at the snack. No, they're not gonna sit still, they're gonna get the snack. So with the toy, maybe a little bell, uh, I they were just playing and then I could like make a little sound with the bell and they would actually look at the camera sometimes they would actually like walk towards me to try and get the toy but not as aggressive or fast as if I was holding a snack so maybe get a little toy with the bell okay so you have your toy you have your camera you have your 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 location picked out maybe check if your camera is set at like autofocus or like eye tracking autofocus because cats are fast I mean, if you use your manual focus point and you're moving around, your cat is a little bit older, sitting still or sleeping, no problem. But if your kitten is young and they're moving and they're active, I have on my Nikon Z6 II this eye tracking autofocus and you have actually a setting for cats or for animals and a setting for humans. I found that with my dog, who is a golden retriever, has light fur, dark eyes, the human autofocus eye tracking system actually works better on her than the pet one maybe because the camera thinks that most pets have darker fur and then maybe lighter eyes or also dark eyes but I don't know cats that I have have quite dark eyes light fur so I actually kept it on the human eye tracking autofocus but maybe your phone is already autofocusing or you can just like when you're taking the photo tapping on their eyes and then it'll focus on their eyes who knows but make sure you have some kind of autofocus to help you or be really fast with your manual focus point okay next tip take your time maybe get everybody else out of the house <laughs> no kids in the house um, just to have some fun taking photos of your kittens I did have my kids running around because it was the summer holiday but they were just doing something else and not really playing with the cats because I didn't want them to be in the photos so but take your time don't get stressed because cats will probably notice your stress I don't know <laughs> this red spot here okay so now your perspective can change of course so maybe you can start slowly taking some photos and maybe get to their eye level so get down so you have your cat staring straight into the camera really cute what's also really cute is to emphasize how small the kittens are so take a photo from the top maybe use your little bell and they'll look up at the camera and they look even super smaller because you have this like point of view where they're like you take the photo from the top um, the image might get a little bit distorted depending on the focal length that you have of your camera uh, but I think it's super cute as well uh, you can even take some photos from like this frog perspective where you're like taking a photo from the bottom upwards but play with that maybe now Talking about uh, focal lengths, what did I use? I used a 50 millimeter lens, which I like because then I don't have to be too far away from the cat to take the photos. They still kind of notice I'm there and sometimes like look at me, but I can still be far away enough to let them play and not be in their face too much. You can use a zoom lens, 24 to 70 millimeter lens would be great. Um, I used a 50 millimeter, kind of like right in the middle there. So yeah, on a crop camera, like a 35 millimeter will uh, act as a 50 millimeter lens, it's whatever you have as a lens, whatever you like. With the phone, of course, you don't really swap lenses, I think. But um, yeah. 
So yeah, play with some different images as well, like taking some horizontal photos, taking some vertical photos, also taking maybe some close-ups. You can take some photos of their paws, like the bottom of their paws is super cute. You can take some photos of just their head and not with their whole body, but then maybe not cut off parts of their ears, unless you really want to have like a close-up of their little nose, whatever. But maybe play with just like different types of images as well. Uh, sometimes you can change your aperture as well while you're photographing. Like if you're photographing just one cat, maybe shoot with a very large aperture, wide open. You have this beautiful blurry backdrop uh, ground. It actually separates your subject from the backdrop as well. So you have really your cat popping in the photo. But in my case, when you photograph two cats, sometimes you want to have both of them in focus and it's a little bit challenging to have them aligned, same distance from the camera, same time. So then I would maybe choose a smaller aperture, maybe even go to 4.5 or whatever. And then maybe I have to use a little bit slower shutter speed, but then not slower than 1 slash 250 or increase my ISO a little bit to still get enough light in my photo. But then I'll have like a smaller aperture, which is like a larger F number. And then you have more in focus, but also more of the background, which I like less, but sometimes you have to do a concession. Um, I wouldn't really advise to use flash on cats, at least never a direct flash coming from your camera, coming from your phone, because it might hurt their eyes, they're really sensitive to light. Also, you kind of like get this like flat image. Um, if you have maybe a, uh, like I have like a speed light and you can put it like somewhere in the corner of your room, maybe bouncing to the ceiling, bouncing to the wall, so you get like an extra feel light it's really, if it's a really dark day. Maybe put it on like the lowest setting, like 1 slash 128, something like that. But never have it like aimed directly at the cat, at least I wouldn't do that. I didn't use flash for any of these photos. Um, I just, yeah, used the natural daylight that was available. I'm not quite sure if cats like flash, but I don't think they do. Maybe if it's really dark as well and you have like this big LED light, you can use that. With like ambient light, be careful that it's not like the temperature of the light is going to be quite warm. It can be very inconsistent. Of course, if you shoot in raw, you can adjust your white balance as well. Um, but yeah, sometimes you have like these LED lights, like these panels that they also use for videography. Maybe use that if you have it. But otherwise, uh, just get a lot of window light, maybe mornings or later in the afternoons if it's a very sunny day and the light is quite harsh maybe diffuse it with some like sheer white curtains and if it's a really dark day maybe do pick middle of the day when you do have the most light but not like super harsh sunlight but just enough light for your photo okay so i heard that cats really like bags and boxes and i think yeah that's true i kind of experienced that as well so if you want some fun in your photos maybe have like a box that also matches maybe the color of your cat without like any words, letters printed on it, just like a cardboard box. Or in my case, I had like this wooden bucket. Cats like to sit in buckets and boxes. So maybe even place like a little snack inside so they start sitting in it. And then you can take some photos. I would maybe say try to fill the frame in at least a few of your photos. So don't maybe have too much of the background and decor and then a very small cat unless you want to really... Uh, like photograph the living environment of the cat uh, but maybe don't photograph too much empty space around the cat uh, so you really have your beautiful cat sharp and in focus and just popping out of the image uh, but also don't cut off any body parts if you're taking a photo of the full cat of course if you're taking close-ups intentionally beautiful go for it but i would also advise maybe to take a few photos of the full cat or kitten and not cutting off body parts and not having like a lot of empty space in the photo but kind of like fill the frame uh so yeah maybe when taking the photos take a few without their collars as well if they always wear collars because i really like it without but i also have some photos with um because i had to get used to the colors anyway and it was kind of cute as well so we'll maybe take some without as well so what is a good time to take photos of your cat? I'm, I'm not a cat expert, so I don't really know, but I would maybe take some cats, oh, I would maybe take some photos right after they had their meal or right after they just wake up by themselves. So they're really in a good mood, I guess. Uh, but it's also fun to take some sleeping photos maybe. So 
yeah, take a break, have a coffee and wait until they start like snuggling up and falling asleep. Kids and sleep a lot. Um, and then take some photos of them as well sleeping. That can be really cute. So yeah, just some random tips and tricks on how I took photos of my kittens. And um, I really love those photos because they're so big already. I mean, they're five months now, six months. We don't really know. Uh, but uh, they're super big. And I love that I still have photos of when they were so cute and small. They're so cute, but not as small anymore. So yeah, let's go to the story of how we ended up with two kittens. So I never imagined myself having cats. Uh, this summer we went to Sweden with some friends to a concert of uh, Toto. And um, it was really cute. And we drove back from Sweden to the Netherlands. And we actually dropped off some friends at their family farm. So one of the girls, her mom runs the farm. Uh, and then some of her brothers help her mom. Um, they have like a dairy farm, so they have cows. So we were dropping her off and the mom came over and asked how the concert was, and if we had fun. And then we were just talking there. Um, and she said, well, I actually have two kittens um, here at the farm. Uh, just like in the barn, barn and they play with each other and they're actually still quite young and they don't have a mom anymore and um, would, would it be something that you would be interested in like taking these kittens home because actually I can't take care of them and they want to come into the house and play they're very social but they're like covered in fleas and I have a dog and other animals to take care of so I don't really have the time to play with them and they are like a bit neglected also the farm is close to quite a busy road so it would actually be a little bit dangerous for them to stay there because they might run over by get run over by a car and not survive very long so we picked up the kittens and they were so cute and very small and um they had like infected eyes and you could see that they had been scratching themselves a lot and they were just so cute. So I said, well, I really like them. So I looked at uh, my boyfriend. He was like, why not? And I'm like, really? <laughs> we're going to take them home? Um, so it was all kind of like spontaneous. Because actually the next day we were going to get three chickens. So we were going to pick them up after coming back from Sweden. Because I didn't want to go to Sweden while we just had a few chickens in the backyard. So, and then suddenly we were like, okay, we have, what about these kittens? Shall we take them with us? Um, the kids were not with us, so it would be a big surprise for them, but we didn't have anything. We didn't have like a uh, litter box, um, no food, no um, like crate to kitten cat thing to bring them home in. So we just had them in like a cardboard box, which was <laughs> horrible because we had to drive home for like an hour and swap the bus for our car and the kittens tried to escape from the box the whole time so I had to like push them back into the box while the box was on my lap and I just felt so sorry for them like they're gonna hate me this is the first impression of me and I'm just stuffing them into a box and every time like putting their head back in so that's a good start for being their mom um, but anyway they uh, still like me so that's good but um, so yeah we brought them home and um, we didn't know exactly how old they were, uh, so we took them to the vet and they got some vaccinations and uh, we treated them. Long story short, so we have two kittens. It's they're like a brother and a sister. Usually, don't you don't see a lot of rat girl cats, but she's a rat girl cat. So, so they're going to get like their operation. They're not going to reproduce together, which is probably not a good idea. Um, and there's still a lot in the backyard. I think they sometimes escape to their neighbors to the neighbors' gardens, but they come back every time I call them. So that's a good sign. Uh, and at night they just sleep on my lap and they love playing together and sleeping together in this little basket. Anyway, super cute. So yeah, thanks for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment. Uh, do you have cats? Um, well, obviously I didn't name the cats, the kids did. So maybe share the names of your cats and if you are going to take some photos of them, maybe which tip you like the most then you're going to apply. Uh, you can also share some photos of your cats on Instagram. Maybe tag me and I can share them or at least look at them and um, show them some love. So yeah, you can follow me on Instagram as well. Um, who knows, I might see you there. So thanks for watching. Have a lovely day. Um, and um, yeah, bye-bye.